Hi there, I'm Dee Harrison. I'm one of the coaches for You Are Made New Ministry and for Hope's Garden. This is our Coach Me series in which we share insights, themes, and reflections that often occur in our coaching sessions, and we sense the Lord is nudging us to share them more broadly. Today, I want to talk to you about peace. We all want peace. I want peace in my home, peace in my relationships. I really want peace in here, in my own heart, in the, my relationship with myself. And I, I know that the women we coach, and I'm sure many of you are walking in some really hard places, navigating circumstances that are often complex, and there's not an easy answer. And we can often feel like peace is just not something that I can have while enduring whatever it is that I am in the midst of enduring. And yet St. Paul's words to us are compelling. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. And he also invites us to believe that Christ gives us peace that can surpass, can transcend our understanding. Peace that transcends whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. So how, right? This, those verses come out of scriptures, which is truth. So that must be true, but how? How do I make that true in my own heart, in my own life? I'm sure there are many answers to that question. And today I want to present an idea that's really important to think about. It gives us a practical starting place that can have a big impact. So you see on your screen now an iceberg and you can see that little part of the iceberg that sticks above the surface. That's my exterior actions, behaviors, my interactions with others, my expressed emotions, the part of me, the way I'm relating that is visible exteriorly. And the part under the surface, the interior, are my thoughts, feelings, the movements of my heart, mental or contemplative prayer life, my interior sufferings, my interior joys, the beliefs I hold about myself and others, about the circumstances of my life, and so much more. That's why that part below the surface is so big. And one more thing I want you to notice as we look at the iceberg is that that part beneath the surface is actually supporting and forms the foundation for what happens exteriorly in my exterior existence. So here in my interior world are two very important relationships that support my exterior behaving and interacting and expressing. That is the relationship that I have with the Lord and the relationship that I have with myself. Now, I know that the relationship I have with the Lord is the most important one. However, I want to say that there was a time in my life when my relationship with me actually became more important. So let me explain how I'm relating with me, how I perceive me, the narrative I say to myself all day long actually has the ability to interfere in my relationship with the Lord in a way that I am opening to him or staying close to him. The way I believe myself worthy to receive what he offers, worthy to believe the promises in scripture, such as this common one that I love so much, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. So the way that I, do I, do I believe that? You know, so I can limit what actually becomes possible in my relationship with God through my unbelief, my unwillingness. So there was that time in my life when my relationship with me became more important than my relationship with the Lord because it was having an impact there that was not helpful. My inner conversation all day was filled with this narrative of not enough, too much. I'm a letdown. I'm a disappointment. It's all my fault. I'm just constantly making mistakes. God couldn't love me after what I did or after what was done to me, I should be ashamed, embarrassed, et cetera. With this narrative on repeat, God's still small voice in here just didn't have a chance. How can I begin to shift the conditions beneath the iceberg, the conditions happening in here and in here and in my intuition, my gut? How can I begin to shift those conditions so as to form a more supportive foundation. So let's start with one simple step. If you would, I'd love for you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in and then let out a good exhale. 
And I want you to ask yourself, what words would be nice for you to hear today? So I ask myself that, Dee, what words would be nice for you to hear today? And I think it would be helpful for me to hear, Dee, you're okay. You're okay. You're not alone. Jesus is here with you. Breathe in and breathe out again. Write down the words that would be nice to hear today. Words that would be so great if a friend or a loved one called you and said to you, hey, I was thinking about you and I just want you to know this. Because whatever that is, you can give that to yourself. You can start by offering it to yourself. So what are we doing when we do that? We are intentionally interjecting kind words, supportive words into that narrative that just plays on repeat. And what starts to happen? My nervous system calms down. Maybe you noticed that already, just as I took a couple breaths and said some kind words, my nervous system calmed down and there's just a little opening, a little part of me that becomes more attuned, changing that channel on the dial to be more able to hear the voice of the Lord, more open to receive what it is that he's always offering me, his presence, his abiding presence, his love, his peace, to where we started, peace. So one thing for today, to begin to open ourselves more and more to the Lord's peace, which is in fact available to us in every moment, and it truly does transcend all circumstances. The one thing I want us to take from today is to speak a kind, supportive word, interject that kind, supportive word interiorly. It's a very effective way of pressing pause on that narrative, on that tape of old thoughts that just spiral around again and again, right? So focusing on a new narrative that is gentle and self-supportive. And, and the most important thing about this, the most important reason to do this it enables and expands my willingness to receive Jesus. He's here with me at every moment, offering me his love, offering me a place to rest upon his heart. But when I'm listening to that story of you should have, you shouldn't have, I can't believe you, you're not enough, what the heck were you thinking? I'm effectively saying, not me, Jesus, not me, Jesus. I mean, others Yes, your unconditional love and care, it's for others, but it's not for me. I'm rejecting what he so desperately wants to give me. So that's our goal here in all the work that we do is to become more and more aligned with truth, more and more united with Christ. And today's one first step is to speak a gentle, self-supportive word to yourself. God bless you, and I pray that he will provide exactly the words that he wants for you to hear today.